talking about beyond the property market, there are other opportunities as well, like, you know, in, in other investment uh, vehicles. Is that what you're saying? Uh, yes, of course, there are actually other investment tools. Uh, I can share today, I, and that was exactly some of the questions that uh, my clients, my friends ask me. And sometimes, okay, I just have to admit that I am a real estate uh, consultant uh, in my job. But of course, actually, I came with the uh, purpose that I am passionate in financial education. So to me, right, real estate is just one of the tools that allows people to gain a financial wealth or an independence towards their journey. So there are other vehicles that people might be open to look into it. And of course, today I'll share about uh, some of the tools out there. I wouldn't say that uh, they are good or no good. Every tool has its own pros and cons. So, and that is why I wanted to share uh, in today's session as well. Okay, so in terms of the uh, comparison between these three, right? Uh, liquidity for cash, of course, is very high. If you, even you put in fixed deposit, the next day, you, if you want to early terminate, you can do that. Or you put in a bank, you can anytime withdraw your cash. So it's very high liquidity. But in terms of stock, right, um, I'll put it to a mid to a high. Because by the time that you want to settle or you want to sell your shares, uh, there's a certain period like uh, three to five days or, you know, I think the settlement period actually becomes shorter. So um, you can, we call it T plus one or T plus three. We need that you settle within three days. They, they will actually, once you sell your shares, they actually park your money inside bank, back into your bank account or give you a check. So, and then uh, liquidity in terms of meat is more like you want the stock to actually last longer because you think there's potential in the company. So you maybe don't want to liquid that. So it depends on mid to high, but of course there's an option for you to choose it to be high. But in terms of property, uh, the liquidity is actually very low. In a sense that, uh, I think this is probably one of the cons so-called of property. So you tell me as property, if you buy it today, of course you won't say that I'm going to sell it tomorrow, or I'm going to sell it next week. Uh, you will be subjected to a lot of taxes if you do so. So in terms of property, you always when you invest in it, you always think in terms of long term. Later I'll talk about the period. About. So long term for property because you can't get out of the, like you have a buyer straight away, you know, next day. Of course, we, we do have, you know, what we call as one viewing, one deal that we did before or either I also did before. So, but it won't be that, you know, that 100% you'll reach, you were able to, to get a buyer straight away, you know, like next week or what. So the liquidity, I would say is very low. And you know, because of the taxes you got to pay, usually you hold it long term. And leverage. Of course, cash, there's no leverage to be done because whatever cash you have, uh, you just put in the bond, you put in the fixed D, it's that already. Um, in terms of stock, it's possible. People actually took uh, what we call a margin call. That means they leverage by taking a money out from the market to borrow. But I wouldn't advise for stock. So I would leave it as possible, but not for this. Whereas property, uh, there's a high leverage because in Singapore, you can get a loan up to maximum 75%. So all you have to do is that you've got to have prepare yourself a down payment of 25% minimum. And of course, and this can partially be paid by CPF if those Singaporeans and PRs here um, that you can pay partially by CPF and then the, the rest will be cash. Because actually people always have a mindset that uh, Property is always high cost. Yes, it is if you look at a high quantum, like a 1 million, it's kind of scary because we all of us don't have 1 million cash. But what if you have a 250, because 75% is a uh, loan, you have a 25% cash, and partially if you have CPF, you can actually pay by uh, CPF because the minimum up cash outlay is actually a 5%. And then for the investment amount, uh, of course cash, whatever you have is there. And stock, is you can actually get a few thousand, you know, and then in the US market, I think you can just get one lot or no, just one share or something. So your investment amount, of course, is very, very, very low. And of course, property in terms of that quantum, like I say, is relatively high and may not be everyone be suitable to purchase that. And, it, and for the subsequent properties, of course, the taxes will actually come into place. And for investment property, of course, for cash, um, is there, is there. So for stock, uh, I would say short to midterm. Again, you can um, you can actually sell off your stocks. I done contra before, meaning that I buy the stocks now, I sell it tomorrow. It's able to do that. That's why I say it's short. 
So, but it depends on how, what is your strategy. Not all can do it, like, like I say. So, uh, if not, you'll be termed as a trader. So, it's not the best thing. So, but it's, it depends on your strategy. So, short to midterm, midterm maybe two years or one year plus, uh, I would say one year, you got to uh, re re review your portfolio because in terms of stock, right, it's more on looking the, the company as a business. So if you actually look at the business and think that, okay, the trend of business is actually good in future, there's a need for it and there's a future growth, there are actually quite a lot of number of uh, criteria to look at the stock. Other than looking at the company, you look at the management, you look at whether, uh, do they have expansion plans? Can they actually scale up? Is their product or services uh, is proved to be, uh, have their own consumers and it's consumer lasting. So at what is the consumer behavior, et cetera, et cetera. So there's much more things to look at that in terms of stock. So that is why I would say that sometimes you invest long, uh, maybe one year plus, you've got to still think a little bit that is this uh, good enough to stay even longer. So as for property, of course, long term, you put the money there and then it's just there. <laughs> like you don't touch it. Basically, what as an investor, property investors, right, what you look at is actually the rental, your tenant. I know some people might just say that, oh, I need to manage my tenant. But of course, that is uh, part and parcel because in every investment, uh, there is still work to be done. I don't want to say that there is no work to be done and you can just earn money by shaking it. So... <laughs> But there is still some work to be done. Of course, you've got to hire an agent to find a tenant and then you've got to pay all this, your maintenance fee. You've got to look at your house sometimes. So but this is just a little work uh, that is being involved in it. But of course, long term, three to five years minimum because of the taxes involved, which is seller stamp duty. So of course, we will hold minimum for that. And then after that, we review whether uh, do we need to hold or do we need to sell So at that moment. So that is the review of the portfolio after that. Um, the last thing, we, what I want to share is actually risk reward ratio. Okay, why why that ratio? Okay, it also depends on the individual on how what is your risk management, how is your risk appetite, because not all people might you know they are they actually invest in some tools and then they will tell me that oh I cannot I cannot sleep when I see the market moving so much. So, um, in terms of cash, of course. We term it as risk free, but before that, I actually talk about the queue is happening, and then be, you know they are printing money, they are giving a lot of from the reserve, and they are a lot of money out there, uh, which is holding cash. Of course, cash is king, but it may not be a risk free in the sense that when it comes to long term, what is the uh, inflation rate per year, and whether your cash holdings in the banks uh, is able to fight that inflation rate every year. So it might have an opportunity loss because of that, that the, the, the money, the interest that you earn for putting your cash, uh, of course, is lesser than the inflation rate that is happening. Uh, but of course, in terms of risk, you have full control because you can do anything you want with your cash. Uh, because the reward, I would say, is the interest rate. You put in banks, you put in fixed deposit, or you have a bond, you know, that's, that's a fixed coupon rate. In that uh, for stock of course the volatility is there uh, even right now you know uh, COVID-19 they are of course now it's really quite <laughs> trending high like, from what I see so um, unrealistically but anyway uh, between that of course much you see that there's a really a drastic drop in almost uh, quite a few a number of stocks of course some stocks still perform very well like our dear Xian Xiong I think market <laughs> because of the trend so um, so there is still the volatility that you need to sum up, you know. At one point, you know, our blue chips in terms of Singapore Airlines, our DBS, our that's Capital Land, you know, at one point they dropped really like 20 to 30 percent. So whether you as a investors can actually sum up the risk. If you think that this is just a temporary movement, you are not bothered by it because you believe in the long-term uh, potential of the business and the management, then you know, then it's okay for you. Of course, FX risk, why I bring it here is also because if you invest in overseas markets, uh, especially US and uh, Malaysia, Hong Kong, China, then of course, you've got to stomach the FX risk as well. And of course, you have less control as investors over business. Although you're a shareholder, you own the rights to vote during the AGM. But again, there's a small percentage. Your vote may not be, unless you really 
a major shareholder, I say, then you have a voice in the business. So in terms of control, it will be less control and people might just wonder, wow, I leave all my money in the hands of somebody to manage it. Yeah, that's is the way. That is when you believe that the business, the company can bring much forward, then yes, you you won't be actually subject to all the volatility uh, fears that might happen, you know, when you see, you know, the markets uh, coming up and coming down. Of course, the reward part is dividends, especially for REITs, uh, they do give a quite attractive dividends. And of course, uh, appreciations because stocks actually rises and then uh, you gain that appreciation, uh, which I say is that is sometimes uh, it's actually higher than a yield over property. But bear in mind that stocks, I would say full cash because I don't advocate leverage in this point of view. Uh, whereas property, uh, low volatility, if actually we block out the uh, property price and that's right, you will see that uh, you will see some volatility happens. And of course, the volatility is not as huge as, uh, as stocks that we see in the market because uh, it is relatively stable and uh, the volatility sometimes, right, it can be explained like in Singapore, right, it's because of the government measures. Uh, especially there's one moment where the government actually introduced the TDSR, which is the total debt servicing ratio. And that was the point that, you know, you can see that the power price index really just drops because uh, it's really totally disrupt all the real estate market. But at that moment, but after that, it shot up back to the game. So if you actually draw a graph, right, you can see that a general uptrend, I would say, in the Singapore property market. So it's just a little bit uh, ups and downs because of the TDRSR, because of the cooling measures, even the ABSD, or even sudden, you know, announcement of the change in the policies. Of course, uh, this will actually affect the prices and or it's more surprising the prices, which is also good for that our government actually introduces such cooling measures. And of course, there is more control on your side because you can decide what I want to buy. I can decide what I want to invest. I can decide which tenants to choose from. Sometimes, you know, sometimes you might like, oh, okay, I at least I have this control. I can have say because I'm the owner. Oh, I don't like certain things to be done. At least I can have a voice. And then I, as an owner, I have 100% voice to it. To, to. So I would say more control itself. And of course, government measures, uh, we, we don't have control over it. But I would say that these government measures are also good to, uh, to be in for, if not, actually our prices are, uh, are really going to be much higher than what it is covered now. So I would say it's still a good measure uh, over it. And of course, in terms of reward will be the rental. They are talking about the tenants will be paying the rental, which your rental would be able to cover your money installment. Or if not, you'll be covering, definitely covering your principal of your money installment. And another reward, of course, your capital appreciation uh, in future that should you choose to sell in future. So after going through all this uh, comparison, right, so uh, maybe I will talk a bit more on the property sites. Like, uh, as for you, uh, do you still believe in the future of real estate? Or, you know, uh, do you still uh, want to actually look at other tools when this? Uh, later, I'll share you also one point about the difference, the very, very big difference. I think people might forgot about why uh, property sometimes. Um, I would say is that it can have a portfolio that you have a healthy uh, percentage in terms of where you're going to plan your assets, uh, I think that will be good as a from an investor point of view.